super chat. Guys, I know it sounds, and Chris, we appreciate it. Guys, I know it sounds absurd, but I have heard, now I don't know if there's any kind of whatever out there, the Saudis were interested in college football. What are they not interested in? Uh, how concerned should people be that they reach a deal with the Pac-12 for exclusive broadcast rights? Uh -huh. One, I think the Saudis are interested in everything. And if that happens and you're the Pac-12 and you could feel pretty good about it, I mean, if that can help you get what you want even more. All right. But I'll say this. Now, this is just hypothetical. Right. I, and we're, we're, I've seen a couple. I, I even Googled it, Chris, when I saw your super yeah, chat. David, and David Upper wrote all, a column about it uh, on The Athletic about what if they, you know, they did. I don't know if, that, like, that's probably f way far down on their list. They want to get into professional sports first. That's where they, they want to get into. I wouldn't be surprised to see them. I mean, look, they're trying to get into the. I don't think they want a conference. I think they want a, they want all of it. Yeah. Um, or, I mean, they bought, they, they bought their way into a couple of teams here and there and some other professional sports. But, um, okay, Stanford and Cal did not want Baylor to come to the Pac-12 because they were a religious school. Are they going to stand? I mean, now, granted, Baylor's not bringing as much money as the PIF will, but... Are they going to really stand idly by and have people go like, you didn't want Baptist in the league, but 9-11 you're good with? Like, okay. Uh, how much are you worth? How much can you swallow and or turn your head and cough? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably low on their priority list in theory. I mean, it could certainly happen. I think, you know, the pack would probably be the most receptive, receptive to it, actually. Um, you know, just seem like uh, – I don't know. Like they, they, they would just be probably a good candidate to need a, a a big dose of money like that. That would be like all over that part of it. Um, I also think politically, like the Baylor thing. I don't think that's just a religious thing. I think that's a yeah. Southern Baptist yeah. thing in particular. Um, so I don't know that that really like hinders them. Like the whole uh, religious side of that compared to the Southern Baptist part of, of Baylor, for example. So yeah, I don't know how much of a hindrance that would be, but yeah, I, I think though, like here's, here's where I kind of stop with it is if you're going to take the big swing of, you know, entering the college football game, which I would hate to see that. Like let's, let's, I know you probably look far enough. Everything's owned by somebody who's not mm -hmm. American or whatever. Like I, I get the world that we're living in, but can we just even pretend for a little while or have it be as close to possible as we can, that it's still an American sport run by yeah. American people and all that. Um, I, I feel like that would be kind of, that would be like the, the straw that broke the camel's back would be college football getting infiltrated with, with, that money and, and all that sports washing or whatever you want to call it. But I would think if they were going to do it and make that investment, it wouldn't be for the PAC 12 necessarily. I feel like, wouldn't you take the biggest swing possible? If you're going to go get the PGA mm -hmm. and you're buying, you know, pro sports franchises, would you not go for the luxury line? Mm -hmm. And, and, all due respect, I wouldn't expect them to buy the Big 12 either. Uh, so that's that's actually the part that makes me go, no, I don't think it'd be the pack. But all the rest of it, yeah, sure, it could it if, could happen, I if guess. If they have a list of every sports thing that they could buy, yeah. I would think that college sports are down the list. I would think because, so, Because, yeah. again, pro sports are – look, they're, they're trying to give Tiger Woods and Messi – like, those are what they're trying to buy. Like, they tried to buy Tiger Woods and Messi, and they told them no, um, that – that's that that's how it is they they bought the pga essentially they're you know trying to get players to come and play in saudi arabia and the soccer league there are you know they're trying to get in the nba and major league baseball and the nhl uh, the nfl will be an interesting thing because they're the nfl has been very serious for a long time about every owner being an american owner but also billionaires like more money so right. yeah you know that that could be one of those things where like well I, this is different i will be uh, stanford cow and the pif and whatever that uh, even kim coulter i can't even imagine i just that can't that that, i can't because and we're not saying it we're not reporting it as a question that was asked no, i just us. don't i don't see it as one the highest priority on their list i don't put anything at all past them uh because of what they're trying to do with all this unlimited money that they have uh but uh, I don't think there'd be a high priority. And then I do think that you would have to, um, if you look at how badly it's gone for Jay Monahan's at the PGA Tour, uh, 
we've heard a lot more from a lot of colleges about how they feel about how things go in other parts of the world than we have from the PGA Tour. And the fact the PGA Tour didn't have to say anything about that ever. In fact, playing events over there until it became a fact that the players were going to take money and leave. So... Yeah, Jay Monahan's never had a talk on world issues until a year ago. But How'd that places, work out? yeah, but places like Stanford and Cal and you name a university, they're always doing it. Uh, so, so one question from Dud Dundies: uh, Wouldn't it be against the law for them to have anything to do with state schools? Now, I guess you're talking about the PIF I, I, or Saudis. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to act like I know, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the the rules, the laws, whatever. That, uh, that that might be. Well, I mean, look, if they bought a me, if they had a media platform that they had and bought the media rights, then I think you're already probably funneling it through what would be an American shell company anyway. Control of schools is impossible. Control of media deals is not. That was from Sir yeah. Blah Blah Blah. Yeah. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for the super yeah, chat. Yeah, they're not going to run respond. Stanford or Cal or none, no. like nothing like. But like, as far as controlling a league and TV deals and all that, I mean, I wouldn't put it past anybody. There's a lot of money flowing through that, but yeah, it's it's a fun, it's an interesting. I, I don't know about fun to think about them running like a college football league, but it's it's an interesting hypothetical and and worth worth Is asking it, yeah, because uh, who the heck knows what kind of road we're going down right now with okay. all that uh, ownership and uh, changes galore in terms of how sports are operating. Yeah, could Roger, they buy ESPN? Yeah, absolutely they could. Uh, yeah. 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 In a you know, heartbeat. It's, honestly, it's about – I've seen this brought up, and, I, I, you know, I don't know that everybody will love hearing this, but, you know, I, I've seen this from the Pac-12 side from time to time on, you know, the, the braggadocious nature of, hey, the Big 12's on ESPN and the Big 12's on Fox, and meanwhile ESPN's laying off, you know, thousands of people throughout the year – and it's like, how much of a gem is that going to still be? Like, is that still ESPN, the great ESPN? You know, but I still feel like when you're talking, cable still matters. I don't care what anybody says. You can tell me about 10, 15 years down the road. But as far as right now and for the foreseeable future, it still matters until it doesn't. And so I, I do believe there's still that security there. But I see where the argument comes from. And I know why the argument's being made, because you're trying to make them look lesser. Um, but there is something to, to be said for the future and streaming and how profitable an ESPN is right now in terms of their their uh, cost-cutting measures and all of that. Uh, but the Big 12 locked in their deal. The SEC locked in their deal. Most other conferences have some sort of a deal with them. So from that standpoint... I think uh, it's it's a question that's it's interesting to look at, but it's not that far down the road yet to think that, you know, ESPN's jumping the shark when it comes to college football broadcast and things like that. No, I, right. think, I think ESPN's problems are not just the, I mean, it's Disney as a corporation spent a decade buying a lot of stuff. And Dude, that, a few years ago, they were buying everything for like five times the price tag. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so they've, they've lost millions of subscribers. They're trying to do the straight to consumer thing right direct yeah. to consumer thing now but they have compared to when they were the baby in the late 70s when they first came on the air and i would sit no, there no. and like wow they're not doing direct to consumer yet that's the big theory that's, from marshan that they will or our in one of those two that that was what eventually will happen is they will launch direct to consumer but that's still a work in progress but there is the belief that that will be inevitable here in the next you know less than handful of years i always thought and i could be behind the curve on this but i always thought what espn was when it first came out was really it was for someone like me all of us it was the go-to i'd watch the sports center or whatever but it almost as if they got too big they had too many wings i shouldn't say in the white house because that's a common thing going on this week but they had they had too much <laughs> like they got to be too large and you wonder sometimes where could you find this or this and this and sometimes we battle that with who we are is it how much can you branch out without losing who you are and the core of what you do? Yeah, I, I think and the politics and the fact that the, the things have changed when you had them on channel twenty seven. Yeah, I th I think there's that, a lot of reasons. But. Yeah, but I mean they they bought like a ton, a ton of stuff and a lot like of that like contracts, right? Yeah, yeah, contracts like you're talking about ESPN with you know contracts with media rights. The Disney bought. I mean, when you talk about buying Star Wars, Marvel, Indiana Jones, like all these things that they own now, free and clear, that they've, they bought straight outright, that 
now have to turn a profit for them every time they do something with it. So every time they make a comic book movie, every time that, you know, you put a league on television, it has to turn a profit for you. So yeah, the NBA is probably going to do that for you, but I don't know about anything else, you know, how it, how it's going to spin uh, other ways around. So yeah, they've got, they've got a lot uh, that they've got to cover up for and they'll probably figure out a new way to do it. But yeah. All right. 